Hello my beautiful little muglets. Today we are talking about a couple of new heroes. I don't know why we're doing the pet tutorial again though. Oh well, another free pet. I'll, I'll take it I suppose. We have 101 out of 100 now. But yeah, there are a couple new heroes I want to talk about. Uh, one is not here yet, I believe, but the other one is. Moonlight Surin. And we also have some patch notes to go over. So I was checking out the uh, exclusive hero coming, I think next week or something, but not the new Moonlight. Tempest Surin, I guess she's called. Oh wait, no, I think she was here already. I'm pretty sure I remember reading this skill, but we got that introduction animation thing. Uh, or maybe I read it in a patch note or something. Her ult is an up to 85% chance to inflict the enemies with unable to be buffed for two turns. The damage dealt will increase depending on how much health she has lost. And you can soul burn it for extra damage. As she is a thief, I can imagine this will do some solid damage. So the unable to be buffed there is just kind of a bonus. And that's mainly a damage skill, I'm gonna guess. This one's pretty interesting, so she can not get one shot, and as long as you keep her over 51% health, she can't die. Also, her combat readiness will increase by up to 30% when she's under 70% health and an enemy's turn ends. Unfortunately, that's only once per turn, so it's not as good as it sounds, but still, 30% is a huge chunk of combat readiness. And then on our basic, we got uh, some chances for bleed. All in all, first impressions, she actually doesn't sound that interesting. I wouldn't know like what her role is really. So looking at her skill multiplier, she has a 1.05 on her AOE, 0.2% increased damage per 1% of her own health missing. So it definitely can hit for a decent chunk, I suppose, if she has solid stats. Her ult looks super awesome. Damn, that reminds me of something. Her ult animation is really unique. That might remind me of those like older samurai animes like Inuyasha and uh, Roroni Kenshin, I think it's what it's called. I haven't seen that in a while, damn. And her basic skill, okay, pretty basic, but yeah, it's a basic skill. Gotta go to the journal for her stats. 1000 attack, yeah. She's pretty fast though. I don't know how well she's gonna do as a damage dealer, but she doesn't really have much else besides just not getting one shot. <laughs> so I don't really know. Her ult animation is, is one of the coolest I've seen, but like, yeah, I don't know how viable she's going to be as a hero. But yeah, we got a lot more to get to, so that's where I'm going to end it with my first impressions. Not super impressed, but you know, there's always something I can be missing. And then we have a new exclusive hero coming, Cerise. Another water hero, wish we would have some more fires, but fine. Here's her ult animation. Haha. <laughs> Damn, that's awesome. So there was a lot of behind the scenes as far as design and animation goes. I recommend you just watch the video yourself because it is quite interesting how she's drawn, how she's animated, her backstory and all that. It's quite nice. But I'm here for the mechanics. So let's take a look at this. Five Star Ranger, immediately what pops out is her massive speed. 122, definitely up there with the fastest heroes. 970 attack, it's whatever. As far as I remember, she messes with combat readiness a lot, which is uh, something to always pay attention to. So her third skill is definitely pretty interesting. She'll decrease buff duration by a turn so all those immunity sets will be gone when she goes and hopefully that's before she tries to restrict them which is a new debuff which will make it so where they can't boost their combat readiness so units like judith oxlots are gonna get really hard countered by her unfortunately it looks like the most annoying combat readiness manipulator at the moment in arena which is bizarre doesn't seem to really care about this since he tanks your combat readiness rather than increasing his teams. Also decreasing speed for two turns. Okay, the guy down here says with a maximum of 100% chance to inflict the debuff. So this is pre-skill enhance. So yeah, her third skill already sounds really interesting. Unfortunately, again, bazaars aren't really affected by it, but like, I guess everyone who increases combat readiness. And then we have her skill too, which also sounds pretty good. We have a 100% stun there, decreasing combat readiness by 30%, and increasing her own combat readiness by 50%. At first I thought this was her ult, and it was AoE, and I was like, hell yeah, we basically just have a faster version of Bazaar, since her soul burn effect is also ignores effect resistance. Uh, it's still a good skill, even though it's single target. If you give her like an oath key or whatever, she can probably target a bazaar, try not to miss, ignore effect resistance. I guess as long as they don't have immunity, then you would have to get rid of that first. So bazaar is just too op because he can remove the buffs and then do all the stuff, yeah. But granted they don't have the immunity set, then they will get their combat readiness decreased by 30%. But perhaps more importantly than the decreased combat readiness is the guaranteed stun. And her basic skill is a single target attack, which will give herself 15% combat readiness. So, pretty basic there. And so yeah, she'll be here next week. Sounds really interesting. Of course, I'm going to summon for her. She is an exclusive after all. Bro, look at this. 15. I don't see no pet snacks up there. Uh, I'm wondering why I didn't check that immediately, but like, I already heard they were coming, so it's not as much of a shock, but... 
Dude, that's so awesome. Oh yeah, that's right. All the hero balances are going through now as well. So yeah, Melissa, Cecilia. The one, the only one I'm really interested about is uh, Moonlight Tenibria. Looks like nothing has actually changed with it. So I'm looking forward to trying her out. We got some artifact buffs as well. Uberius's tooth, especially. That additional damage is getting increased by 50%. That's very significant. Yes, homemade snacks were removed. Uh, when the repeat battle has completed, players will be able to set up repeat battling again. So it's not based on day. You can. It's just the at once amount you can do is based on the stars. That's actually awesome. And if you actually have any homemade snacks left over, you can exchange them for pet adoption tickets. Cool. Okay, so we went through the tutorial again to get a three star pet because they changed it. Uh, so it's just basically an extra pet there. Okay, and we can already add the pets for synthesizing So we get bonus chances to increase the star level good. I might start messing with pets again. It looks like it can go up to 100% Maybe that's what it looks like got a side story bittersweet desert festival. Have we had that one before? No, I actually don't think so since there's uh, the the new hero in there I do remember a tamarind side story though golden cocoa cookie. Okay. No, this is definitely a new one got a drop rate for Lydica I think she's a really nice hero for a lot of PvE content. Also a drop rate for Lilibet. Two drop rates at once. Of course the new hero we went over. Again, very nice ultimate. Not super interesting skill set. At least first impressions wise, there could be something I'm missing. Oh, geez, Mercenary Helga. Specialty change. She is pretty interesting, honestly. Speed imprint. A AOE attack buff. Let's check that out real quick. Oh, damn. Increasing attack and effectiveness of all allies for two turns. Effectiveness, huh? Damn, that's actually pretty nice. 50%. So if you have like an AOE defense breaker, you know, going after Helga, they wouldn't really need that much effectiveness. Or hell, pretty much anyone else. She will also, of course, have a uh, ultimate animation now. Awesome. That's pretty sick. Kind of basic, but still very nice. Also, let's see what happens on her skill tree. Health, damage, armor, attack, eh. Increase effectiveness of all allies by 5%. Oh, cool. Armor ends decrease defense effect chance by 5%. That's right, she has a, like defense break on her basic, I think. Has a 60% chance to decrease defense of the enemy for two turns when using attack chain. Well, damn, that's pretty cool. Attack chain is just getting 60% chance to defense break attached to it. I mean, I think the main reason people use Helga is for her cry of victory and of course her speed imprint, but she could be like really viable in PVE scenarios as well. Higher chance for defense break here and now a defense break chance here and then attack and effectiveness on her cry of victory. Definitely sounds pretty nice. Equipment crafting cost reduction. Damn, reduced by 40%? For crafting equipment? I mean, as far as I remember, the crafting cost wasn't actually that bad. Mainly the gold you need to enhance the pieces so you can bring it to the sanctuary and do something with it. They're also selling us a specialty change pack. 100% runes dropped scroll for two hours, 300 greater runes of your choice, and uh, five leaves. I mean, if it's like five bucks, yeah, but it's probably gonna be like a hundred. <laughs> I mean, especially now that we have pretty much free auto repeat, I guess if you just want to save some energy. And yeah, it looks like a bunch of bugs and stuff were fixed. Huge wall of text. But yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for the patch. You know, there were quite a few things, you know, Helga specialty change I'm looking forward to diving into. Obviously, pet snacks being removed is a huge thing. New side story. The other the other pet improvements, you know, higher chance to actually get them up a star. Of course, the Spectre Tenibria buffs and all the other buffs, but I really only care about Spectre Tenibria. Also, looking forward to the new hero next week but i think for now that'll pretty much do it not too much else to say regarding stuff i'm now gonna go auto battle 15 hunts let's get some extra energy here first even though i think oh thank you very much even though i think it would have just taken it out of my stuff anyway but the bad thing is if you're gonna do 15 you're actually wasting a lot of experience unless you have like five stars you want to raise level 50 yeah, we can throw Fighter Maya in there. Helga, we should try and get to five star already, honestly, and then raise her to 50 so we can start that specialty change. It sounds really good. And I've been wanting to raise Helga anyway. Damn, we are missing. Oh, go away, Dingo. I don't like you anyway. Both my Dingoes are triple S. Probably start doing Wyvern again, honestly. It's just that it's so cool that I can solo as a Manic with just this guy so I can raise three heroes at the same time as well. But yeah, I suppose that'll pretty much do it for today's video. Not too much else to say. Nice. No snacks up there. Make sure to tell me what you think though in the comments down below. Dropping a like if you did enjoy is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks as always for watching and until next time.